right to that potential October surprise. The New York Times reporting that Tehran is making moves towards holding one-on-one -on -one talks with the White House over Iran's nuclear program. ABC's David Curley is at the White House with details. Good morning, David. Good morning, Sharon. This could be a case of semantics, possibly an overstatement of the situation, but it does come at a very interesting time, just hours before the last presidential debate, which will cover foreign affairs. The New York Times with a headline saying that there is an agreement in principle between the United States and Iran for one-on-one -on -one talks over Iran's nuclear weapons program. But that would be after the election, according to the Times. Well, the White House was quick to deny parts of that report, with spokesman Tommy Veter saying, quote, it is not true that the United States and Iran have agreed to one-on-one -on -one talks or any meeting after the American elections. But while no meeting may have been set, other sources are suggesting that the Iranians have indicated that they actually may be ready to talk. After that comes about four months after that last round of talks ended involving a larger group. And the U.S. has said it is willing to meet one-on-one -on -one with the Iranians to get them to promise not to build a nuclear weapon, not to enrich uranium. Sharon? And David, to be clear, no meeting's been set, but what would likely have to happen first? Well, this is all about sanctions and enriching uranium. And the president and the West believe that the sanctions are punishing Iran. That's why they may want to come to the table. So the president says he will not loosen those sanctions unless Iran stops enriching uranium and that they can prove it, that they can verify that they're not enriching uranium for a nuclear weapon. And David, as you mentioned, the timing of this is so curious. The weekend before this final presidential debate hours really before and I think that's why the White House was so quick in its denial last night that uh, this report by the New York Times was completely correct. Uh, there are other newspapers that are quoting diplomatic sources. I think the White House wants to say, listen, this is not coming from us. Uh, but you're going to hear a lot about this in the debate tomorrow night. It'll be interesting to see if the president confirms some of this, how much information he actually gives about where we do stand with talking about Iran, about getting rid of their nuclear weapon. It's going to be a fascinating debate tomorrow night, Sharon. Yeah, it's a good October surprise. Thanks very much, David Curley. As we said, this news comes 16 days before the election, one day before that final debate, which will focus on foreign policy. You're looking at a live shot now of the debate site in Boca Raton, Florida, where the two men who sometimes appear not to like each other that much will once again step into the arena. It's your voice, your vote. Let's bring in the host of ABC's This Week, also the host of GMA, a man who barely sleeps and always works. George Stephanopoulos, hey Dan, happy Sunday to you. What do you make of the timing of this? Is this real and will it affect the debate? It's hard to know what to make of this. You've got on the one hand the Times quoting administration officials saying Iran has agreed and the White House saying no, uh, there's no agreement. So first you have to take that into account. What you're looking at is the idea that Iran believes it's in their interest to get this out if the initial report uh, is true. Now, I think the most important thing, to, the most important factor right now, though, is how will this play in the debate? As David pointed out, it'll be interesting to see if President Obama confirms any of the details. Perhaps even more important, how does Mitt Romney respond? On the one hand, he would want to appear open to doing anything to prevent uh, a war over the, Iran's nuclear program. On the other hand, Israel, through their ambassador, has already signaled they're not open to these direct talks right now and Mitt Romney all through this campaign has tried to ally himself very closely with the government in Israel. These these debates this year have been huge as you know. I mean we, we've had tens of millions of people watching them. The first one especially really affected the dynamic in the race. Do we expect this third one to be potentially as impactful given that it's number three and it's focused on foreign policy? Hard to imagine it could have as much impact as that first debate which really changed the dynamic of the race this race. There are fewer voters in play. Uh, right now. Because of early voting. Uh, exactly right. Yeah. right. And this, the subject is foreign policy, which voters tend to not care about as much in their voting. On the other hand, this race is so close right now that everything matters. Everything can turn this, in the, can turn this race. And finally, this is the last chance that both men have to speak to this many voters, still likely to be tens of millions of voters watching tomorrow night. Yeah, I'd imagine a lot of people will tune in because this has, to, to, to put it in a sort of crass way, it's become sort of reality TV. These two men are really at each other's throats. No question about it. Although I would wonder, coming off the ferocity of last Tuesday's debate, if both men try to tone it down a little bit. We saw that at the Al Smith dinner on Thursday night. Here they're going to be sitting at a table talking about foreign policy. And Mitt Romney, the last few days, has been trying to, to give a more moderate uh, presence, have a more moderate tone, emphasize bipartisanship. I wouldn't be surprised if he looks for ways tomorrow night to emphasize where he agrees with President Obama on foreign policy. And very quickly, who is under more pressure going into this third debate? Who has a bigger, who needs to have a bigger night? 
Oh, that's, a, that's actually a very, very tough question. Ray, uh, Mitt Romney still seems to have some momentum still coming out of that first debate. On the other hand, President Obama has the advantage in these key battleground states where, where, where this race is going to be won or lost. I think both men are under pressure to avoid one thing above all, no huge mistake. If they get through the night with no huge mistake, they both go to their turnout machines the final two weeks. George, thank you. And uh, we should say that George has a big show this morning. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who used to work in the White House, is coming on. And so is Florida Senator Marco, Marco Rubio. Also, this reminder, join George and Diane Sawyer for full coverage of the final presidential debate tomorrow night at 9 Eastern.